there's been a bit of a reaction to uh, a lecture Brian gave, which uh, I'm a little bit surprised at. I saw the lecture. It was on BBC Two, so many millions of people saw it, and I thought it was fantastic, A Night with the Stars. I, I was amazed that he had the courage and then the ability to explain quantum mechanics quite like he did to, uh, to the general public. And it, it got quite technical at times. I didn't watch it at the time, no, no, but since then I've become aware that it's all kicked off, basically. It seems to me to have caused two, two reactions. One amongst the physicists, that's at a, a more technical level, and then one amongst a group of people who have jumped on some words that he used. Some guys were posting, you know, scientists were posting, uh, you know, blogs on blogs were saying, oh, you know, this, this, is, this isn't right. Uh, yeah, Brian Cox himself was then responding to these blogs. It was all kicking off on Twitter. He was talking about how everything in the universe, when you're dealing with quantum mechanics, how things are connected. And in particular, he was talking about electrons and the energy associated with electrons. And there's been this sort of to and fro, and some of it quite nasty, um, you know, on Twitter, on blogs, uh, discussing the rights and wrongs of what, of what Brian said. He had this fantastic diamond <laughs> which he'd managed to get hold of, worth a million pounds, I think it was. In this diamond, there are three million billion billion carbon atoms. I don't have diamonds to, to play with, but he had a diamond and he said, oh, if I rub this diamond and I move the the energy levels of the electrons within that diamond and he said that because of Pauli's exclusion principle that would cause the electrons far away everywhere in the universe to move a little bit as well. Of all the electrons in the universe must respect Pauli therefore every electron around every atom in the universe and he, he went on to say that because of what's known as the Pauli exclusion principle which says that no two electrons can ever be in the same quantum state, except he didn't use the word quantum state, he used the word energy, and that's where the physicists have come in. Sitting precisely the same energy level. Because they can't be in the same quantum state, therefore, if you move one electron up, and are a group of electrons, and change their energy, then the whole system throughout the universe will change as well. It's not quite right what he said, no, um, but the spirit of what he said, it, is okay. He didn't draw a, a, an, an implication in the sense of saying anything controversial, it seems to me. He just said, he was just pointing out. So other people have drawn the implications of it. They have uh, inferred from it that uh, that means that, for example, one group of people are saying that accounts for you know, the fact that we, we're all connected in our, in our consciousness is all connected because when you change energy levels in one group it immediately affects the energy levels in another group and that, that link is real. So everything is connected to everything else. Because in quantum mechanics you can't precisely say where something is at any given or where it is and what its velocity is or momentum is, there's an uncertainty. So you describe things in terms of wave functions which give you what are known as the probability of finding things. So the bigger the value of the wave function in a given region, the more likely it is that object is there. But these wave functions can spread and they do spread and, in, and the, the interconnectedness is simply the fact that all of the electrons, the wave function describing all of them is spread across the universe. That's what quantum mechanics can do for you. That, classical mechanics can't. It can describe all of the particles with one wave function. That's what the idea is. And so it's not surprising to me that if you alter the state of an electron over here and that it's going to have a knock-on effect somewhere else. Where, where all this comes from it is the Pauli exclusion principle. So this is, the, this is the, basically the idea that no two fermions and le electrons are, are fermions can occupy the same quantum state. Okay, now I said something slightly different there to what Brian said. He said energy levels, because you know you could maybe associate uh, an energy level with one particular quantum number, but it doesn't necessarily describe the whole quantum state of that electron. Well, I, I watched the lecture. I, I thought it was a fantastic lecture, as I've said, and I do remember that last bit of it, thinking, oh, I've never thought about the interconnectedness of it, and the, but it, it didn't cross my mind that there was anything untoward that he was he was talking about things. Uh, propagating faster than the speed of light or anything like that. He wasn't, but um, what has happened is uh, 
first of all, there's a group of people, as I said, have interpreted it as, as being um, uh, an, an example of the fact that our consciousnesses are all connected and we're in one beautiful universal universe, and, uh, which I think is just irrelevant here. Uh, the second group, which is more relevant, is that the physicists um, have picked up on, on the fact that Brian was, was using the exclusion principle, the, the funda a fundamental principle in physics, uh, and talking about it in terms of energy levels alone, whereas the exclusion principle is, is a bit broader than that. It includes energy levels, but it includes other uh, unique numbers, quantum numbers associated with, a, with the state of, 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 a, of a particle. Uh, and so there's, there's a technical uh, uh, argument or discussion that's been going on, and that's been going on at a really neat level, I think. Watching Twitter, the, the discussions that are going on, it's a high quality argument as they're talking about the various physical aspects. This isn't simple stuff, uh, but it caused the other side of it, this thing about the consciousness, etc. I think so irritated Brian. I didn't see this bit of it of the on the on the Twitter uh, Twitter world. I, I don't have a Twitter account, <laughs> but um, it so irritated him that he decided he wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal, in which he basically pointed out, you know, he was not implying that um, that this instantaneous effect of the of the of the electrons reacting to one another can be made use of in terms of sending information. You can't send any information faster than the speed of light. So you can't make use of this to actually say, I know exactly what that person's thinking. Therefore, every electron around every atom in the universe must be shifting. You know Brian Cox? I know Brian, yeah. He's a good friend. Has he stuffed up? Has he done something wrong? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, I think what's happened here is the, the physicists have got very excited and, 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 and rightly started talking about the physics that he was describing but the uh, the language that he used we have to bear in mind he was using in a, in a on a television program towards the end of a television program being broadcast to the general public and so rather than talking I, this is my interpretation i haven't asked brian rather than deciding to talk into about the quantum state which would involve talking about the angular momentum and the magnetic moments and the spins potentially you could talk about the energy levels the angular momentum spin uh, there's a whole bunch of quantum numbers that you could include, and, and in fact, that's one of the, the key the key features of this that there are a number of things that you could include to describe this uh, this particle. So none of the electrons in the universe can sit in precisely the same energy level. He decided to concentrate on a concept that people are familiar with, which is energy, the idea that you can move from one energy level to another. That was probably new enough for, for most of the audience. And so rather than describing the things in terms of quantum states, he, he concentrated on energies and said that you couldn't have things having exactly the same energy. And that's not necessarily the case with the, this Pauli exclusion principle, which he, he was making use of. You can't have two fermions, indistinguishable fermions, in exactly the same quantum state. So they could have the same energy as long as some of the other numbers in the quantum state are different. All the electrons across the universe instantly but imperceptibly change their energy levels. So everything is connected to everything else. I mean, th th there is some interconnectedness, but it, this, is, this oversimplifies it. And I think that's what's got people's backs up. Uh, like I said, so he's talking about energy levels there. Um, I mean, saying you can't have two electrons in the same energy level, but that's not entirely true. We know that in a helium atom, two electrons occupy the lowest energy level. The, the reason they can do that, the reason that doesn't violate Pauli's exclusion principle is because they have different angular momentum. He was picked up on that, and that then led into a more general discussion about the implications of all of this, of the fact that, you know, it is, it, it is the case in quantum mechanics when you... You, uh, when something changes, maybe the energy of a system changes, or you, you in, in this case, rubbing the, the carbon, and you change what's known as the Hamiltonian, which effectively is the energy of this system, and that changing in the Hamiltonian affects all the other particles because of this property which I mentioned, that in quantum mechanics, the wave function that describes or it describes all of the particles. So changing some over in one region will affect others in another region. But it, the, the key thing is that doesn't break causality. It doesn't mean that you can send a signal over to your 
experimental friend in, say, in the Andromeda galaxy, which they can make use of faster than light could have travelled. That's not possible. Guilty of some oversimplification, I think. Um, well, that's why he's on BBC Two and you're on 60 Symbols. Yeah, you know, I, 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 you know personally, I think people should lay off a little bit. Um, it's good that, that, you know, that this is sparking a debate within science because at the end of it all, um, you know, we're all going to learn, learn something, right? We're all going to learn, that, you know, OK, Brian, Brian's made this point. It's got people interested in what, he, what he's talking about. And then people are starting to look a bit deeper and, and get to the real physics behind, I think, what he was trying to say, what he would have liked to have said, but which would never have been shown on BBC if, he, if he'd said it. You, you're talking as if it's all been a very collegiate debate and everything's been lovely. But the physicists have been a bit snipey too, haven't they? Yeah, no, I mean, because they're quite passionate about the subject, but I don't think they have necessarily, I mean, they're now discussing it, right? The, the initial, I, mean, I think that's probably a problem with Twitter as opposed to a problem with the physicists. Twitter has become this staggeringly powerful uh, forum, by, but you're limited to, what is it, 140 characters or something. So you can't really describe Pauli's exclusion principle or what you really meant in a lecture in that kind of uh, lang uh, in 140 characters, or if you can, it's pretty impressive going. Yeah, I mean, they do. It, it's quite normal for physicists to have, to have fights with one another. Uh, I think that's how the scientific method works, so there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, some of it's getting a bit snidey, and I think maybe there's a little bit of jealousy involved. Uh, but also, you know, it is important to get, to get things right. I think it's actually science working really well. And, it, and it's also a manifestation of how science itself is evolving, the, the way it's been communicated. Maybe some of his responses to the Twitter comments might have been a little bit more uh, considered, shall we say. <laughs> They've now actually effectively gone underground again, in the sense of probably gone back to original email, using emails and talking about it. But the initial uh, discussion about this point uh, was done in the open for everyone to see, and uh, it's really interesting.